First, we need to understand what exactly intuitive eating is. This is when we eat based on our biological hunger and satiety signals, rather than eating for emotional or hedonic reasons. Essentially, we eat when we are hungry, and we don't eat when we are satiated. To some extent, we all eat intuitively. We have all experienced what being hungry feels like, and what being satiated feels like. And our ancestors have used these signals to regulate food intake throughout our evolutionary history. Intuitive eating isn't a specific diet to follow, and it doesn't disregard all other diet strategies. Rather, it is better to look at it as an overarching principle that can be used in conjunction with other diet strategies to assist with energy intake. It is a very simple concept in theory, and not a new concept, but also takes some practice to implement well in the modern world. So why should we try to adopt an intuitive style of eating? Well, there are a few key benefits of intuitive eating that might help us get to and maintain a healthy body weight. The first is that, as we mentioned, intuitive eating is something you have to deal with whether you want to pay attention to it or not. It is an inbuilt system which you can't switch off, even if you follow some other diet strategies. If you don't eat, you will get hungry, and if you keep eating, you will become satiated. How much thought or attention you decide to pay to these signals is a different story, but they will always be there. So even if you follow some other diet plan, it can be helpful to at least understand how your biology is responding to the diet and adjust accordingly. The second reason is that it can help make your diet more adaptable to different contexts and situations. After all, we aren't robots who live pre-programmed lives. Even if we have a perfect diet plan, inevitably something will throw our plan off. This might be due to social events, family occasions, or work-related situations. So a benefit of adopting intuitive eating behaviours is that it is adaptable to any situation. While you might not be able to eat exactly the right calorie and macronutrient targets you have planned, intuitive eating allows you to mostly stick to your diet plan without stress. We will explain how to do this later in the video. Another benefit of intuitive eating is that it is a sustainable way to maintain a fairly healthy diet. Most diet strategies focus on hitting certain targets or following systems. And in most cases, these strategies aren't all that adaptable when we enter different situations that are outside our normal routine, as we previously discussed. This often makes them less sustainable to stick with long term, because it assumes 100% adherence to the plan, which is not very realistic in most cases. Adopting intuitive eating behaviours is something that everyone can stick with for the rest of their lives, since they experience hunger and satiety anyway. However, there are some situations where intuitive eating might not be the most appropriate way to regulate your diet. As we will discuss later, intuitive eating will drive us towards a relatively lean and healthy body weight. Although in some cases, we would want to intentionally manipulate body weight outside these ranges for performance related goals. For example, if you are intentionally trying to reduce body fat beyond healthy levels for a specific event, like a physique competition for example, then intuitive eating is probably not going to get you there. You can still pay attention to hunger and satiety signals, but you might need to go against extreme hunger for a temporary period of time to get as lean as you want. Alternatively, an athlete that can benefit from being at a heavier body weight, such as a heavyweight weightlifter or certain positions in contact sports, might not achieve this through intuitive eating. Again, you can still pay attention to hunger and satiety signals, but you might need to eat even when you aren't biologically hungry. As we have mentioned a few times already, intuitive eating relies primarily on biological hunger and satiety signals. Essentially, our physiology attempts to keep us at homeostasis, or a state of balance. It doesn't want us to starve, and it probably doesn't want us to store a lot of excess body fat, both of which are detrimental for health, function, and survival. There is thought to be a range of body fat levels that our physiology tries to keep us within, known as the dual intervention theory, but this is something we will touch on later. One way in which our biology attempts to regulate this is via hunger and satiety signals, which tell us when to eat and when not to eat. If we are low in energy, we feel hungry, as a signal to consume food. If we have enough energy for the current task, we feel satiated, as a signal to not eat. And we are constantly in a state of flux between hunger and satiety. In the short term, hunger and satiety are regulated based on how long it has been since we last ate, how much we ate, and what we ate. Although it is also regulated by long-term factors too, 
such as our chronic energy balance state and our current body fat level. So at any given time, we are more or less hungry based on all these factors. According to this research review, this is thought to be primarily regulated via the hormones of ghrelin and leptin. Ghrelin is known as the hunger hormone, which promotes the feeling of hunger, the drive for us to consume energy. Leptin is basically the opposite. It promotes satiety or fullness, decreasing our drive to eat. Going back to our diagram, ghrelin and leptin are inversely related to satiety and hunger. When we feel hungry, ghrelin is high and leptin is low. When we feel satiated, leptin is high and ghrelin is low. And this is a simplistic overview of how biological hunger and satiety are regulated and what intuitive eating is based on. However, there are also other drives to eat other than purely biological signals. This can be termed our desire to eat. According to the Canadian Society of Intestinal Research, our desire to eat can also be influenced by emotions and environment. Biological hunger is when our body craves fuel. This is a physiological response that doesn't have a specific trigger and doesn't go away until energy is consumed. While other forms of desire to eat are when our brain suddenly wants a specific food because it tastes good, because we are bored, or for other emotional reasons. So we might eat at times that we aren't physiologically hungry, but rather because we see or smell tasty food, it is a specific time of the day that we normally eat, or as a distraction of an emotion, such as being bored or sad. A practical way to tell the difference between biological hunger and other forms of desire to eat is if the hunger goes away or remains. If you go and do another task and you forget about the craving, then it probably wasn't a real biological hunger. Although if the hunger remains and amplifies over time, then you are likely truly biologically hungry. There is also a similar concept regarding satiety, biological satiety versus food satisfaction. Biological satiety is when we eat enough to fuel our energy needs. Feeling satiated means our body no longer craves food, at least not for another few hours. And there is often a short delay between the time we ingest our food and the peak satiety effect, usually around 10 to 20 minutes after finishing our meal. Food satisfaction, on the other hand, refers to how satisfied you were with the meal from a taste perspective. Eating a meal we enjoy, in addition to biological satiety, allows us to feel satisfied with what we ate. Whereas our desire to eat can still be present if the meal consumed was not satisfactory from a taste perspective. Different people and cultures enjoy different foods, and this might also change depending on the time of day, the time of year, and probably at different body fat levels too. But the point is, our desire to eat might still be present even when we are biologically satiated. So going back to intuitive eating, the idea is to pay more attention to biological hunger and satiety signals, and pay less attention to other factors influencing our desire to eat. This, however, is easier said than done, since the modern environment often takes our attention away from biological signals. Instead, we often eat according to environmental and emotional signals. Intuitive eating doesn't mean you can never eat foods that you enjoy, or participate in social events. You certainly can. The point is to just be aware of our biological signals, and primarily use them to guide diet decisions. So with all this in mind, let's now discuss how to implement intuitive eating in practice. There are four primary intuitive eating factors to discuss. The first is how much do we eat? Well, there is no exact amount that everybody should eat at all meals. And there really isn't a right or wrong answer either. You could eat all your total daily calorie requirements in one meal, or you could eat just a small snack. Either works if you follow the principles of intuitive eating. The reason for this is because how much you eat depends on how hungry you are, and how much you eat will influence satiety for the next few hours and possibly even the next day. The more you eat, the longer you will be satiated for, and the less you eat, it will be a shorter time before you are hungry once again. So while any amount of food will work, here are some practical guidelines to help make informed decisions. In most cases, you would want to eat until you were well satiated, but not overly full. A decent rule of thumb comes from the Japanese phrase, excuse my pronunciation, hara hachibu, meaning to eat until you are 80% full. You want to feel satiated and not have to think about food for a good few hours, but not feel full to the point where it is uncomfortable. Adjust how much you eat based on your hunger levels. 
if you aren't hungry, it is probably just best to not eat at all and wait until you are physiologically hungry. But if it is a lunch break or another time where you only have a few opportunities to eat, then you can eat more or less based on how you feel. If you aren't really hungry, just a light snack with a tea or coffee might be enough. Otherwise, if you are quite hungry, eat a bigger meal so that you feel satiated. It is also a good idea to eat relatively slowly, so that your hunger and satiety signals have time to catch up. There is a delay from when you ingest food to when your satiety signals peak, around 10 to 20 minutes or so. So eating too fast can sometimes result in eating more than you intend to, since your satiety signals haven't fully registered yet. This brings us to the next question, which is how many meals should you eat? Again, there is no correct answer here. It will be regulated by how much you eat at each meal and how long it is before you become hungry again. If your last meal was bigger, then you will probably feel hungry sooner and vice versa. In some cases, meal frequency is influenced by work, social events and family life. For example, if you have a lunch break at school or work at the same time and always have a family dinner every evening, those two meals are guaranteed. And this isn't a problem because you can always regulate what you eat and how many other meals you consume throughout the rest of the day. Furthermore, this might also be influenced by yesterday's diet too. If you ate a large meal for dinner last night, you might not feel hungry in the morning and might delay your next meal until the afternoon. Maybe this means only eating lunch and dinner as opposed to breakfast, lunch and dinner as you normally would. Here are some practical guidelines regarding meal frequency. For most people, an average meal frequency of 2-4 to four meals per day usually works quite well. And you don't have to stick to the same number of meals every day. This might mean 2 meals one day and 3 meals the next. Let time pass and your biology will let you know when it is time to eat. The next question is then, when should we eat a meal? Ideally, you only want to eat when you become physiologically hungry. Although, as we have discussed, hunger and satiety exists on a sliding scale. There is no single moment that you become hungry. It is a gradual shift from satiety to hunger. So if we were to use a 1 to 10 scale, where 1 is as hungry as you can be and 10 is that you are completely full, it is a good idea to eat when you are at about a 3 to 4 out of 10. I haven't seen any research on this, but in my experience, if you let yourself get too hungry, it can be a trigger to make poor food choices and overeat. And if you don't let yourself get hungry enough, you simply don't need the extra energy and might be eating more calories than you need, resulting in unwanted weight gain over time. Although, once again, sometimes when we eat is determined by our work schedule or by social events. In these cases, you can regulate how much you eat at each meal and your meal frequency to accommodate. And the last consideration when implementing intuitive eating is what you should eat. This is an entire topic itself and isn't specific to intuitive eating. You can really eat whatever you want since your overall calorie intake is primarily what will regulate hunger and satiety in the long term. However, what we eat may influence daily calorie intake via its effects on desire to eat for emotional, environmental or behavioural reasons. If you always indulge on highly palatable foods, it makes it more likely for you to overeat at a meal since food volume is usually lower for the same amount of calories compared with most minimally processed foods. This makes it more likely to consume greater total calories over the course of the day and more importantly the entire week. Furthermore, you may not get adequate macro and micronutrients for body composition goals and good health. Here are some general recommendations for what to eat for the purposes of reducing body fat, maximizing muscle retention and supporting general health. Try to include some fruits or vegetables with each meal. These foods generally provide a high concentration of micronutrients to support overall health and function. Include a decent serving of protein with each meal. You don't necessarily need to calculate how much protein you get with each meal, but including high protein foods in each meal can ensure you accumulate a high total daily protein intake. This will assist with muscle growth or preservation, assuming resistance training is also being performed. And make sure you eat meals that you somewhat enjoy. It doesn't need to be your absolute favourite food each meal, but eating relatively tasty foods is important to satisfy your cravings. If you eat foods you don't particularly enjoy, chances are you will still want to eat even if you are physiologically satiated. Now that we understand how to implement intuitive eating in practice, how can it be used for weight loss and weight management purposes? 
Well, the first thing to understand is that intuitive eating doesn't necessarily have the goal to reduce body weight. The goal is to pay attention to your biological signals and adjust your diet accordingly. However, in most cases, people tend to eat fewer calories when implementing intuitive eating, and as a result, weight loss is often achieved without intentional effort. This was seen in this meta-analysis, which assessed the effects of mindful or intuitive eating strategies on body weight change. It was found that, compared to no specific diet intervention, intuitive eating results in greater weight loss, as we can see with the diamond towards the left side of the midline. Although compared to other calorie-restricted diet strategies, intuitive eating appears to be similarly effective for weight loss. So intuitive eating will usually result in consuming fewer calories and often results in weight loss. The reason for this is probably because our habitual diet in the modern world is highly influenced by our external environment, which usually drives us to consume more food. Food marketing, convenient access to food, high stress levels, and a lack of physical activity can all drive us to eat without being biologically hungry. So when we bring our attention back to biological systems, we may start to eat in line with our actual energy needs, kind of like recalibrating a machine. So if we eat intuitively, where will we end up? Well, if we were to eat purely based on biological signals, we would probably end up maintaining a relatively lean and healthy body weight over time. This is based on what is known as the dual intervention theory. According to this research review, this theory essentially suggests that there is a body weight range that we are healthy and comfortable at. Our physiology therefore attempts to regulate our diet and exercise habits so that our body weight falls somewhere within this range. If we are above this range, known as the upper intervention point, our biological signals will try to promote a decrease in body weight. And if you are below this range, known as the lower intervention point, our biological signals will try to promote an increase in body weight. It isn't entirely clear what this range is, and it probably differs between individuals. Although as a very general range, this seems to be somewhere around 8 to 18% body fat for males, and around 16 to 26% for females. So essentially, if we were to eat purely based on biological hunger and satiety, we will probably settle somewhere within these body fat ranges. While it is difficult to study this topic in modern society, where our environment has a large influence on eating and exercise behaviour, this research review looked at diet and exercise habits of various hunter-gatherer populations. Body fat percentage of a hunter-gatherer population in Tanzania was an average of around 9% for males and around 24% for females throughout adulthood. While this isn't clear evidence of our intervention points, these populations are likely to eat more based on biological signals since they are not influenced by many of the modern environmental drivers to eat. We should also understand that intuitive eating is somewhat of a skill that takes intentional practice. With experience, we will have more awareness about when we are feeling true hunger and satiety and when we are influenced by external triggers to eat. We also get better at knowing what these signals mean in our context and how they change in different environments and situations. So ultimately, we can make better decisions about when to eat, what to eat, and how much to eat throughout our everyday lives. It is also a good idea to have a decent understanding of calories and macronutrients too. Understanding what foods are more or less calorie dense and are higher and lower in different macronutrients can help make appropriate food choices when it is time to eat. A good strategy to implement at times is what I like to call a diet audit. The idea is to accurately track your normal food intake for one whole day or even multiple consecutive days using an app or other method. The goal is to see the calorie and macronutrient profiles of the foods you regularly consume and the diet as a whole. This allows you to assess what an average day of eating looks like for you, so that you can look at improving your diet if needed. For example, you might find that total daily protein is lower than you would like to meet your muscle growth goals, so you can intentionally try to include more high protein foods in your everyday diet. Taking all this information, let's establish some practical recommendations. Intuitive eating is when you use your hunger and satiety signals to guide food intake. You eat when you are hungry, and don't eat when you are satiated. Although, we should be aware that this refers to actual biological hunger and satiety, not our desire to eat or satisfaction of food. 
Intuitive eating can be beneficial as a diet strategy as it can allow you to meet your nutrition goals in an adaptable and sustainable way, which is often an issue with conventional diet approaches. However, we should also be aware that if you were trying to gain or reduce body weight beyond normal healthy ranges, intuitive eating probably isn't going to get you there alone. In practice, intuitive eating can be implemented by eating until you are satiated but not overly full. Eating until you are around 80% full is a good rule of thumb. Try to only eat when you are physiologically hungry, not when you are craving food for emotional or hedonic reasons. A good time to eat would be when you reach around a 7 to 8 out of 10, with 10 being maximal hunger. This would usually result in eating somewhere around 2 to 4 meals per day, but this might change based on your individual hunger and satiety signals. Ensure your meals are of a fairly high quality, meaning try to include fruits or vegetables with each meal, and get a decent serving of protein with each meal. And it is also a good idea to eat foods you enjoy, otherwise you will likely still crave food even if you are physiologically satiated. While the goal of intuitive eating isn't specifically to lose weight, weight loss is often a byproduct. This is because our physiology attempts to regulate food intake to support a healthy body weight range, as theorized by the dual intervention model. The modern environment in developed locations usually drives us to overconsume often causing weight gain above our upper intervention point. So eating in accordance with biological signals often results in weight loss and helps us maintain a healthy body weight long term. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Check out flowhighperformance.com for online coaching, training templates, ebooks and more.